Hey guys, this is LEGO Master 99 again, back with another video. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to create the checkerboard program that um, you guys may have seen in the Redstone Computer 4.0 showcase video. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so some basic prerequisites you'll need before programming. Um, you will need the latest revision of the compiler. And in this case, it's version 1.5 alpha for um, the Arcus version 1.0 language at time of recording this video. And you will also need the uh, latest revision of the uploader program, and in this case, that is version 1.1 alpha. It is also highly recommended that you have the Notepad++ IDE installed with the Arcus version 1.0 stylers installed as well. And if you don't know how to do this, I have a video on my channel explaining how to do that. And additionally, also having the um, Arcus version 1.0 specification manual here. Now, this is very helpful when you're trying to uh, figure out the syntax for functions and that kind of thing. So since we have all of this, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and create our program. So we're gonna open up a new session of Notepad++. We're gonna save this as, um, I don't know, right, so computer 40 checkerboard program. Let's just call it like that. We're going to turn on the stylers to make it easier for us to program. And then we're going to add in our Redstone computer compile target tag, an initializer tag, to tell the compiler that this is indeed an Arcus source file. And what we're going to need to do since we are using the GPU um, with this program to draw out the checkerboard is that we're going to need to import the Redstone computer 40 extension library, which basically contains all of those um, functions, all of the GPU functions. And there are five GPU functions in the Redstone Computer 4.0 extension, and they are listed right here in the manual. So we have GPU encode point, which basically takes two separate numbers and encodes them into a coordinate pair. Um, GPU reset, which clears the display. GPU draw point, which draws either an encoded variable or a static coordinate pair to the display. Uh, GPU erase point, which does the same thing as draw point, but instead of drawing, it erases it. And then GPU granular update, which is what we will be taking advantage of in this program today, which basically allows you to transmit huge amounts of data to the screen at one time. All right, so to help explain the checkerboard, um, I have a little image here. And essentially what the checkerboard will be is that every other square is um, its pixel is set. So we'll have a set pixel here set pixel here, set pixel here, every other one. And we can implement this actually very nicely using the GPU granular update um, instruction. So we can use actually two, only two granular update instructions to draw the entire checkerboard. Now I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, so to start, let's go ahead and draw the first half of the checkerboard. So basically each granular update instruction draws one half of the checkerboard. So I'm gonna add a little comment here. It says, draw the first half of the checkerboard. And we're gonna be using a GPU granular update instruction. So granular update. And now we need to figure out what the granular data X and the granular data Y are. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and write out a binary representation of our um, data here. So if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And so this represents an entire row of pixels on the screen it's because the screen is 15 by 15. And essentially what we want is that we want every other pixel set. So we'll set the first pixel, the third one, fifth one, seventh one, all the way up. So then basically we'd have just a bunch of alternating ones and zeros here. And um, to input this data, this row data of into our instruction here, we need to convert it to hexadecimal. So I'm just going to open up a hex to binary converter. And we're going to go ahead and input in, actually, no, we want, no, we want binary to hex. Excuse me. Is there a, here we go, binary to hex. Boom. So then we're going to copy this in and convert. And this number here is what we want to input into our granular update for um, granular data X, and this is the row data that we want. So 0x5555, it's 5555. And now um, for the granular Y data, it's a little bit interesting. So if we have 15 zeros here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, representing each row or each, yeah, essentially each row. So this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, all the way up to 15. What we want to do is that we want to set this to every other row because the second granular update instruction will update 
every other row, if that makes any sense. So what we're going to do here is that we're basically going to have the same thing as we had here. So we'll have alternating ones and zeros like that. So th basically what this means is that um, this data, this data here for each row will be updated to the first row of the display, and the second row, the third row, excuse me, fifth row, seventh row, ninth row, eleventh row, thirteenth and fifteenth rows. So since these are the same numbers, we can just say the same number. And we do not want to enable fill X or fill Y at all. So that's the first granular update instruction done. And this will draw half of the checkerboard. So that kind of shows the potential of the granular update system. So now let's go ahead and draw the second half. All right, so to draw the second half of the checkerboard, let's go ahead and draw the second half of the checkerboard. Oops, checkboard, checkerboard. All right, and now what we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to run a granular update function again. Granular update. And instead of having, um, so for our x data here, we had 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, all the way up to 15. Let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, all right. But now, since we already have this, we wanna alternate it essentially. So now we want 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, like that. So now as you can see, we have alternating pixels set on each row, and then we want every other row instead to be updated. So now we wanna convert this number here, this binary number to hexadecimal, and then we get 0, x, 2, triple A. So 0, x, 2, A, A, A. And then we also want to update the respective rows using the granular data y. So 0x2 double a and 0, 0. And now we have our two granular update functions that will basically allow the computer to draw out an entire checkerboard. And obviously, once we're done with that, we just want to quit the program. So we're going to have an exit function here. And that is our checkerboard program. All right, so let's go ahead and compile this now. So we will go ahead and um, close this out. We can also close this. And so let's go ahead and open up our compiler here. And one thing that you will need, um, since we are using GPU functions here, and since we are importing the Redstone Computer 40 extension library, is that we need a resources folder to enable that extension. And when I go into more detail why that's necessary in um, the compiler usage video. But what we're going to do to solve this, or to enable the Redstone Computer 40 extension libraries that we're going to create a resources folder. It can be anywhere. And then in this resources folder, we're going to create a new text document. But you can rename, but you um, have to change the extension. And this is case sensitive. So just basically type it exactly as I type it. So you want Redstone Computer 40E.DRCHLLC enabler. And this will tell the compiler to load in this. Redstone Computer 40E library, since it is an internal library in the compiler, but it does need to be enabled. So that's why we have this enabler file. And now that we have that, we can go ahead and compile. So let's go ahead and drag in our checkerboard program here, our source code file. We want to um, compile it to core one and Redstone Computer 4.0. And then you want to pass in this resource folder here as so. And then once we execute that, as you can see, we have successfully generated a program binary file and now we just need to upload this file to our computer to our redstone computer all right so to upload this program to our redstone computer we're going to need the uploader program so let's go ahead and grab that and um, i'm going to be using the data pack uploading method that is present in version 1.1 alpha of the uploader because it's superior in every way to the conventional uploading method so let's go ahead and pass in our program binary file we want to upload to core one of redstone computer 4.0 which is target 2 and we're also going to turn on um, cleaning the core first, so deleting all old program data in the program memory, and then uploading our checkerboard program using the data pack uploading method, which is, and those two options put together um, is dash 09. And now if we run the uploader, as you can see, it has generated a data pack for us here. And we're going to go ahead and install that really quickly by opening up our .minecraft folder and then navigating to saves, and then the world that our target computer is located in and then data packs. Now this may or may not be empty for you, but then you just want to move that in there. And now it has been installed and all we need to do is to actually run the data pack. All right, so I have the Redstone computer uh, 4.0 world open here. And what we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to reload. 
the um, data packs. And if you have successfully installed the data pack that the uploader has generated, it should say loaded DRC HLOC uploader data pack for program and then the checkerboard program here. And now that it's loaded, all we have to do is spawn in the legendary cow. And as you can see, this program memory is already clear. This is for core one. And now if we spawn in the cow, as you can see, we have um, our instructions here. And it's only a couple instructions. But now that our program is uploaded, let's go ahead and run it. All right, so now that we have our checkerboard program loaded up here, let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to actually step through this line by line to show you guys um, how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our um, checkerboard program here, how it's side by side. And now I'm going to um, step through it line by line by using the debug center. So we're going to want to enable debug mode. I already have it on. And then you're going to manually initialize the computer. And as you can see, it tells us that the bug mode is enabled. We're going to copy our command here to manually increment lines of code. And now, so uh, once I paste this command in, it's going to run the first line of code that we have, which is this first granular update instruction. And now once we do that, it, um, this will take a few seconds. And as you can see, our data is going through the granular update bus. But then as you can see, it's updating. It basically updated the entire screen with a lot of data. And this is only in one instruction. So if we look here, the 0x5555, which was 10101010101010 which was in um, hexadecimal, essentially for the x, for the um, for each row, that data was um, was updated for every other row. So as you can see here, the first row, third row, fifth, seventh, ninth, all the way to the top, um, and that's what this um, granular update instruction did and then we didn't have fill x or fill y or else it would fill everything here and then it would fill everything here so basically if we had fill x or fill y on it would basically fill up the entire screen with set pixels and then there would basically be no image so let's go ahead and run the next granular update instruction and you will see that once it is updated we will have a finished picture so if we just wait for it to update here Boom. As you can see, now we have our completed checkerboard. And essentially what happened is that it updated every other row. So the rows that weren't updated before were now updated, but with pick with alternating pixels. So instead of 0, 1, 0, 1, <clears throat> we had 1, 0, 1, 0. <clears throat> and then that went all the way down. And because of that, now we have a checkerboard. And then if we run the next line of code, which basically shuts off the computer, the computer will turn off just like that. All right, so yeah, that has been an entire development cycle of creating, um, compiling, uploading, and executing the checkerboard program that was shown in the Redstone Computer 4.0 showcase video. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, especially about this granular update system, since I know it's a little confusing, but if you guys have any questions about anything with this, please let me know um, in the comments. But yeah, other than that, um, have a good day, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.